If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer this question on your own before listening on. In order to get a feel for what's going on here, we'll draw a simple picture of the scenario. So here we have an electron that is moving to the right, and we've marked its initial velocity as v sub naught, and then we have an electric field that's pointing in the same direction, that is, to the right as well. And to understand the key to this question, we want to note the following fact about a negative charge placed in an electric field. And here is that key idea. It turns out that a negative charge that is placed in an electric field will experience an electric force directed opposite to the direction of the field. The key, of course, being opposite. So going back to the picture, we're going to have an electric force acting on this negative charge but the direction of that force will be opposite to the direction of the field. Now since the field is pointing to the right, this of course means that the electric force will be pointing to the left. So we'll add an additional vector here, and we'll label that Fe to represent the electric force. Now we know from an earlier semester of physics perhaps, that the acceleration of an object is going to equal the net force acting on the object, divided by its mass. Now the only force acting on this electron in this scenario is that electrical force. So we can fill in Fe for the net force. Let's note that it's pointing to the left and is therefore negative, however. So we have to place a negative sign on that electrical force, and then we would divide by the mass. Now in this chapter we have learned that the electrical force is equal to the magnitude of the electric field multiplied by the amount of charge on the object. So we can make that substitution. We could then go ahead and actually plug in these values. We know that the magnitude of the electric field is 50 newtons per coulomb. Because this is an electron, the charge is going to be 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. And even though it is a negative charge, we're not going to put a negative sign actually on the charge. So it's probably a good idea to put this also in an absolute value. And then we're going to divide by the mass of the electron, which is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. And we end up with a tremendously large acceleration of roughly negative 8.78 times 10 to the 12 meters per second squared. Now the question isn't asking us for the acceleration, it wants the speed of the electron 1.5 nanoseconds after entering the electric field. And so we're not yet done with part A, but we can turn next to kinematics to calculate that final speed. Now from kinematics, we know that the final velocity of an object equals its initial velocity plus the acceleration multiplied by the time. We know the initial velocity because it's given to us. Notice it's given in kilometers per second, so why don't we multiply that by 10 to the 3 to put it into meters per second. And then we're going to add the acceleration that we just determined multiplied by the time. Now, notice for the time we had to multiply it by 10 to the minus 9th to convert it from nanoseconds into seconds. And when we crunch this down, we should get a final velocity, or we can just say final speed, because they only want that in part A, of roughly 2.7 times 10 to the 4th meters per second. So this would be the correct answer to part A of the question. For part B, we're essentially being asked for the distance that the electron travels. Now, because the acceleration is a constant value, we can turn to another formula from kinematics, and that tells us that the distance is going to equal the average velocity multiplied by the time. Now, technically, this is an equation for displacement. However, the electron is not changing the direction of its motion as it passes through the electric field, so that means distance and displacement are the same value. So we'll go ahead and plug in the final velocity, the initial, and then the time. We've omitted the units just for the sake of clarity, and when we calculate this distance, we should get roughly 5.0 times 10 to the minus 5, and then that'll be in meters. So this is the correct answer to part B. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please subscribe so you can stay tuned for additional videos. Remember, you can send in your own question to the email address shown on the screen, and I'll do my best to post the answer to it on YouTube.